Welcome back to another geology episode. How hot is Minecraft lava? I initially thought this would be impossible because of regular Minecraft inconsistencies. After all, you can take iron and you can smelt it with lava. You can then take that iron, make a bucket, hold lava in it, and then you can burn that bucket in that same lava. In real life, the temperature to smelt iron and melt steel are much higher than the normal temperatures for lava. There are some rare lavas that can be down around 500 degrees C, and one of the many strange things about these cooler lavas is that they do not glow. And this is what reminded me that there is another way to determine something's temperature, and all you have to know is the color of its light. This is because the glow of lava is entirely dependent on its temperature. Everything above absolute zero emits thermal radiation. Our bodies are doing that now, just in the infrared spectrum. Everybody is familiar with the blacksmith heating up metal to work on it. As it heats up, it will start to glow and emit light in the visible spectrum. Most of the light from fire is generated because of the same reason. The chemical reaction is generating enough heat to start glowing. You can get other colors from burning. Most people are familiar with burning a piece of copper in a fire and you get a, a green color. I know these are blue, but we can talk about that at the end of the video. And this isn't the focus of this episode, but who can pass up an opportunity to play with fire and make some cool colors? I did all of this in a fume hood, so don't try this at home. Some of these fumes can be quite toxic. This color change is called atomic emission, and it's entirely different from the light given off purely from heat. That is called black body radiation. For black body radiation, the hotter something is, the amount and color of light given off changes. This relationship is described by Planck's law, which I'll just put up on the screen now. To give a little demo, I built a portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. Visible light is in the middle, infrared is on the right, and ultraviolet is on the left. As we move from right to left, the wavelength of light narrows, and as we go up on the scale, the intensity of light increases. Right now, this object is at room temperature and emitting infrared light. Not really visible on our scale over here. Let's put it on the fire. Once it's reached about 500 degrees C, it will turn this red color. The amount of light increased and the wavelength narrowed a little bit, eventually moving into the visible spectrum. This is a very wide peak and the left side is the only part that is in the visible spectrum. As it heats up more, the peak wavelength moves more to the left and we see more of the visible spectrum. The light is a combination of all the light produced and so it becomes this lighter orange color. Heating more, the total amount of light is continuing to increase. This is an application of calculus, by the way, my favorite field of math. If it's not yours, that's okay. It's not your fault. You probably had a horrible math teacher. To determine the total amount of light we see here, we would integrate the equation to find the area underneath this curve. Once it gets to about 6,000 degrees Kelvin, the color we see is basically white. The surface of our sun is about 5,600 degrees C, so a little bit cooler than what this is here. As it keeps heating, the peak moves more to the left, and eventually the majority of the light we see is coming from the blue section of the spectrum. There's a lot of UV light being uh, emitted also, but we just can't see that. If we were to keep heating, the color doesn't really change much after a certain point. The amount of light will still increase, but blue will always be the dominant visible color. You may be familiar with this if you're into astronomy because these are the colors of stars. Cool stars are red, ours is in the middle, and then hot stars are blue. Our sun emits light because it's just a big ball of hot gas. When you buy light bulbs, they're usually sold with a listing of temperature as well. Even though they're not actually that temperature, now we have other ways of making light besides make wire hot. And speaking of hot wires, I actually have an old piece of equipment called a pyrometer. 
If you needed to measure the temperature of something glowing and you couldn't touch it or interact with it, let's say some lava in the distance, you would look through this eyepiece, apply a current, and make this wire glow until it was the same color as what you were looking at, and then you could just read the temperature off of the gauge here. And nowadays we have electronic versions of this that can measure infrared or UV and do the same thing. So now that we know the colors that are produced when something heats up, another thing we can do is plot these into a color space. Uh, if you aren't familiar with what a color space is, it's a 3D representation of a specific color model. I have a bunch of other videos talking about them. Uh, I'm gonna use HSB. It has hue going around the circumference, neutral tones are down the middle, and with black on the bottom and white on top. If I add some Minecraft blocks in here, as you move in towards the center, the colors get desaturated. But if we plot our black body radiation colors in here, we get something like this. The colors uh, heat up and then they become red and then they move to orange and then they start going across diagonally over through white and eventually getting over into the blues here. This means that all we need to do now is know the color of Minecraft lava and as long as it falls on this trend, we can figure out the temperature. The lava texture file has all of the frames of animation included in it. So all I'm going to do is average those colors together, select that color, and then we actually have our uh, hue, saturation, and brightness values right here. So I'm going to take those and convert them to the scale that we're using in our world, and we can plot it. I'll remove these other blocks so we can see things a little bit clearer. With lava plotted, we can see that it is a little bit below the temperature line, and that's fine. Its brightness isn't really that important. The hue and saturation are the parts that matter. So now all that's left is to look up the closest data point and get the temperature, which turns out to be 1027 degrees C. That temperature is very believable and right in the middle of the range for real lava that I mentioned earlier. Let's look at that in a bit more detail and see if we can figure anything else out. Same as we did with the igneous videos, we are classifying volcanic rocks by the amount of silica in them, felsic, intermediate, and mafic. These types of lava are associated with specific temperatures and types of volcanism. Felsic lavas have the highest silica content, and their lavas are normally around 800 to 1200 degrees C, usually less than 1000 degrees C though. These lavas produce rhyolite, the volcanic small crystal form of granite, as well as obsidian and pumice if they cool fast enough. These lavas can produce very explosive eruptions. Mount St. Helens in the U.S. produces this type of lava. Intermediate lava is a bit hotter and it forms andesite when it cools, and we're familiar with that as a block in Minecraft. Andesite was named after the Andes Mountains in South America, where it is very common. It's also found in island arc volcanics, so, so Mount Fuji in Japan is largely made up of andesite as well. Mafic lava is the hottest of the common lavas, but it has the calmest eruptions. The lava has a low viscosity and usually flows easily. It forms basalt when it cools, and these types of eruptions are the ones you see in Hawaii. Since the Minecraft lava is 1027 degrees C, it could either be felsic or intermediate. But felsic is normally less than 1000, so maybe that means it could be an intermediate lava. Minecraft lava does form obsidian though, so maybe that means it's just a hot felsic lava. I haven't really done a video focusing on lava and magma, but when I do I'll probably have more to say about this. So while we're talking about black body radiation, there is a few more things we can do in this episode. Like I said earlier, this works for fire, so let's look at that. If we plot Minecraft fire, it's pretty close to Minecraft lava, and in real life, a wood fire can get around 1000 degrees C, so that makes sense. The campfire plot's lower down, but the color is basically the same. Its brightness is not as high because the texture includes these darker fringes around the, the edges here. Normal fire seems fine. Let's check out soul fire. Loading it into the space, we can see it's way out past the hottest plotted temperature, which is 40,000 degrees Kelvin. Soul fire does more damage than regular fire, so it makes sense that it's blue, signifying that it's a hotter temperature. But it actually has some green in it too. You can see that it's out of line with the rest of the black body radiation. We could do some wild speculation, and this could signify that this is caused by something else burning in the fire, and not just temperature. You do have to use soul sand or soul soil to make soul fire, so maybe it's something in those blocks. You can get a blue-green color from burning many different combinations of elements. I'm not really sure what colors uh, souls burn, 
But they are the same color when you release them with Soul Speed boots, though. Speculation aside, the reason the fire is blue-green is because it matches the other materials added in the Nether update. Most new materials are grouped into a few groups of colors. Usually those color groups are also complementary to each other. This way you can pair them together and incorporate them into builds easier. And with that, we've come to the end of the episode. I've gotten my recording setup put back together after the flood, uh, but it's still mostly an empty room, so hopefully the echo isn't uh, too bad. As always, thank you for watching. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye. This one's fun. That's just pretty. Yeah, I'd invite this one to a party. <laughs>